Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. This is our fourth year, the summit. Um, we have about 2,200 people registered. I hope you, hope you will be able to make the most out of it. Uh, what I'd like to do in the next 20 minutes is talk a little bit about how we see the future, not necessarily the short-term future, rather than the long-term future, and why we believe we are seeing the end of the old era. Okay, so, uh, but before we'll talk about that, I'll give you a brief about what we did over the last couple of years. Um, we started this initiative about 2011, um, as a, basically as a task force for the government, task force, 10 ministries together, um, with the same mission, with a specific administration and a specific budget, all under this uh, same mission, meaning let's try to find ways to uh, replace fuel. Um, and, of course, in this process, we want to build the Israel capabilities in this field. Uh, we set ourselves with the three major goals, um, which are supposed to reinforce one another. One of them is, of course, to, to use Israel as a test case for the world. The other is to build is Israel's capability. And the third one, of course, is to work together with the world to expedite this entire process of uh, moving away from oil. Um, when we uh, first look at the markets, we looked at the, of course, in the transportation sectors. We also looked at the different technologies ahead of us, and we saw something which was a, a kind of a big question mark at the beginning, is the fact that we actually have more than one technology, and probably in the future we will see uh, diversity. We'll see diversity for many reasons. Some of them, of course, are the uh, technological developments. The other relates to regulation. Uh, some can do, depends on specific subsector, etc. So we decided as, as a government to be uh, technology agnostics and try to develop to be, let's say, uh, the market enabler, which, ena which will allow uh, the market, of course, to, proper, to uh, prosper, uh, but to do it in economic terms. We don't want to do too, ma too many subsidies to the market. So we set up a, a, an array of goals, uh, which that's what usually governments do. Of course, I won't be able to talk about all of it, but bottom line is that we try to provide everything that the market usually don't do for itself, whether it's a regulation or it's some uh, incentive to kickstart or whatever. I can just highlight a couple of things that are happening right now. We just, uh, last week, Ministry of Energy just announced um, the safety net for uh, CNG stations. The idea here is, again, to bootstrap a market which will have difficult to start by itself. Who will start first, whether it's going to be the vehicles or the stations? So we will provide a safety net for that uh, matter. Um, by the same token, we are also uh, going to, pro to, do, to build um, a fast charging um, chain across Israel. Lucky to us, we have a small country, so it's not going to cost us too much. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, grants and other uh, tools uh, to kind of, let's say, kickstart some of these uh, subsectors. Uh, among the things which are a bit unique here is um, the tax regime that we put up in place. This is a progressive tax system, basically um, gives you benefits if you drive cleaner vehicles. So you pay less uh, Levi's on uh, fuels or on electricity, which are cleaner, and therefore there's some kind of incentive to move to that direction. Uh, one of the projects that we are uh, very proud of is the methanol project, something which we uh, combined as a joint venture between the Fuel Choices Initiative, uh, Fiat Chrysler, and Dow Chemical. The idea here was to test and um, to basically prove the availability of, uh, v, uh, of other liquid fuel, which can easily be integrated into uh, current technologies. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to look outside. We have one of these cars that's actually working. And I think recent, maybe an hour ago, there was an uh, official uh, PR by uh, Fiat Chrysler uh, about the, the launch of that vehicle. And the idea in general is to move from 15% all the way to maybe 85%. Um, you will be able to, to hear more about it tomorrow from uh, Virgilio Ciruti from Fiat Chrysler. Um, now, one of the major uh, issues that we dealt with uh, when we first started is the technology. Um, and for that, we combine all the forces that we have within the government, and we build an array of tools, some kind of a funnel, which is supposed to, um, I would say, 
uh, foster new ideas and new technologies, all the way from very basic research, going down up, up to a scale up of new companies and new technologies. Uh, there are many, many tools. I won't be able to, again, to cover all of them. I just want to emphasize a couple of them that you will be able to hear for yourself tomorrow about the capsula, which is, a, again, a concept which brings together uh, innovation, acceleration, acceleration, and research. Uh, again, you, you will also have the opportunity to listen tomorrow to uh, some of our researchers, especially on, on the area of uh, fuel cells, and that will be tomorrow afternoon. Um, one of the most uh, exciting activities that we have done when we first started was the entrepreneurial community. As a joint venture between the Fuel Choices Initiative and the Institute for Innovation, we established EcoMotion, which uh, became a very powerful and very successful, very optimistic uh, kind of uh, activity, which brings together what at the beginning we have maybe a couple of uh, dozens, now we have a couple of thousands of people together. And this is a good opportunity to thank Lior and Boaz and Mayer, who worked very hard on that. So we have plenty of activities, of course. Some of them relates to, uh, to the world. We try to work together, delegations, conferences like this, and many, many others. Um, as, as there was, I guess, some of it relates to what we did. Some of it, I guess, relates to the world that we live in. The number of startups and the number of research groups in this world grew dramatically. Um, beyond our expectation, I, would, I must say, um, giving us uh, um, you know, immense pleasure to see the growth. And I think you see some of it here during this, uh, during this summit. Um, moving to the second part of my presentation, I'd like to talk a little bit about our world because I get these questions all the time. And we deal with a world which is a bit complex. We obviously deal with the energy for the vehicles. Uh, that's where the names come from, of course. But we also deal with the vehicles themselves, which, which can be a major source for uh, energy efficiency. But, of course, we also deal with the users, because if the users will decide to move their, change their behavior, they can dramatically change the way we uh, consume transportation. But what I like uh, to say is that eventually all of it is energy. And what I'd like to show you over the next couple of minutes is why I believe it's going to affect our energy consumption dramatically. Um, so, of course, oh, well, that was a slide where I was supposed to see the connected uh, autonomous shared and electric vehicle. And you're going to hear more about that uh, in the next two days with plenty of different uh, uh, people. Um, my point is that all this digital disruption um, and the one that we're going to talk about, again, autonomous driving and everything, it all relates to the way that in the future we'll consume transportation, but in general, we'll have um, an opportunity to save a lot of energy and, of course, a lot of fuels. Now, this is the point where I should show you a short movie, which I hope to... Okay, here it is. Um, okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about self-driving vehicles. Self-driving technology was actually... Uh, people thought about it many, many years ago. Here's an example. Only one thing is needed for safety, and that's a careful driver. If the manufacturer could equip every car with an automatic driving mechanism, the car would always do just what it should do when it got out on the road. We're all set for auto control. Roger Firebird 2, move to electronic control strip in center lane. Firebird 2, you're now under automatic control. Hands off steering. Hello, I'm Johnny Cat. Where can I take you tonight? Drive, drive. Would you please repeat the destination? Oh, anywhere, just go, go. Please state a street and number. Shit. Shit! I'm not familiar with that address. Would you please repeat that? Uh, 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 so the, 
So the autonomous driving, I guess the concept was here for many, many years ago. But the question is why it's different this time. And of course, there's the straight answer is the computing power and all this, you know, all the development that is done on that angle. But there's also another angle, which is the IRS related more to uh, communication, uh, which allows the sharing business to flourish. And once all these car share services uh, grew up so dramatically, their need to reduce costs is, is enormous. And the two ways for them to improve their cost structure is autonomous and electric. And of course, you see what's, how much money Uber is spending into that and many others. This is one of the reasons we believe there's a, there's a chance that we will see the change. Um, to kind of give you an example how sharing and autonomous and EV can change our world, I gave this short example about this short story about small village. Let's say they have about 100 cars, which drives on average about an hour, on, a, on average speed of about 40 kilometers an hour. So all in all, the entire people of this village travel for about 6,000 kilometers a day. Now one day, we got a new entrepreneur coming in town, and this guy decided to buy two uh, EV automated ve vehicles, started to offer very cheap service. It's even cheaper if you use it, if you share the, your commuting. And soon after, he, this guy is, is able to reach 10 hours a day, where he actually travel about 2,000 kilometers per day. And what's happened as a, res as a result is that suddenly, a lot of people don't really need to move their car, or maybe they just do it over the weekend. And of course, because it's become cheap, people drive more, which is an issue. But all in all, we save a lot of fuel in this process. Now, this um, phenomena will have major effects in our life in many, many ways. Um, again, I don't have enough time to talk about all of it, but I just want to show you uh, just one example, just simple calculation about how much space we will be able to save, how much vacant space we have once we don't move our cars. And this is just a calculation I've done about Israel. And even if it's overestimation, it's still huge. And this is, of course, another, you know, maybe we need a real estate uh, session for that. Um, but of course, technology won't be able to solve all our problems. And this is another example for what can happen. License and registration, please. Hello, officer. My name is Hopscotch. I do not have a license. I am an autonomous vehicle. Driving without a license, huh? I am a self-driving car. I meet all safety requirements. Nice for... looking vehicle you got here. Did you steal it? That officer. Get your hands in the air! I do not have hands. Get on the fucking ground and do it! Officer requesting backup. We've got a car resisting arrest. To our knowledge, the officer acted appropriately to what he perceived to be a threat to his own personal safety. The officer believed the car was armed? Yes, in fact, the officer in question identified a knife. The car was going to stab him? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, don't you find that hard to believe considering cars have no hands? Um, well, listen, we see all kinds of things in our line of work. Sometimes people will hide blades in their hair uh, or in their mouths, for example. Again, characteristics not consistent with cars. Every car is different. I don't proclaim to be a car expert. I'm just simple chief of police. Uh, so I don't know the feature set of every car out there. We look now to a peaceful protest that's been going on since 5 o'clock today. As you'll notice behind me, the cars have arranged themselves in designated areas separated by white lines and turned off their engines, making it perfectly clear they aren't going anywhere. Get down the ground! Oh, oh God, that is not right. This protest has Stop turned resisting. bloody, if you will. I'm not here to hurt you! You have the right to remain silent! Stop. Anyways, uh, put, put joke aside, there are many, many questions about autonomous driving in general. Um, there's also a lot of issues that relates to what call ITS, Intelligent Transportation Systems. We have a pleasure to host tomorrow morning uh, Professor Moshe Ben Akiva from MIT, who studied this field for many, many years. Um, there are a lot of issues uh, whether or not uh, this autonomous will be able to combine the regular transportation or whether it have to be a separate lines or separate services, whether it's going to be just for private or together with other services, etc. Some of the questions actually emphasizing the fact that that can actually increase the amount of, of traveling people do because it's so very cheap. So uh, there's a lot of questions around that and to be honest nobody really knows. Uh, but again we have a very interesting panel later on about autonomous so we'll be able to hear more about that. Um, 
So we also, as part of, of our policy, uh, developed this uh, new program that hopefully will launch soon, where we're going to test many of these new technologies uh, live uh, on the street in Israel, uh, combining with the fact that we also want to research all these implications, whether they are on the streets or off the streets, of this uh, entire revolution. Um, now, of course, and this is just from like two weeks ago, talking about the disruption of this world. This disruption, in addition to everything else, as I said, it's a lot about energy. Uh, and these numbers are staggering. 75%, it's, it's even beyond our uh, dreams. Um, but, you know, cost reduction can come in many ways. Of course, Autonomous talking about like one third of the price, but there's also behind the corner technology like ACC, which is supposed to, um, of course, improve efficiency. And there's the number of vehicles that you should or shouldn't have on the road once you use autonomous driving. And of course, the, the issue of, of uh, traffic jams and, and, and accident, and car accident. All, of, uh, all in all, we're talking about major efficiency in, in, in all the energy services that we have. And it's only the beginning. Just look what happened in the solar world um, a couple of years ago, we were talking about maybe 10 years ago. 95% um, cost reduction, it's cheaper than to produce electricity now than from, from coal, which is supposed to be the cheapest way. Uh, and it's only, again, you see what's happening in the battery prices. Battery prices are also coming down to a point where people are talking about equation with internal combustion engines in a few years. Um, and you just see the, the amount of new vehicles that almost in par with internal combustion energy cars, both in the range and on, in the price. And of course, in, if you talk the entire total cost of ownership, we are almost there, it depends on your profile. Um, so all in all, what we see is that, again, small amount of vehicles can con consume a lot, of the a lot of the transportation. If you add up to the fact that they're more and more electric, uh, you end up with the fact that maybe 30% of the, of the kilometer traveled will be electric. That's a major, major change. And this is only the beginning. Don't forget that private vehicles, only about 45% of the total consumption of fuel in the world are using by private vehicles. The, the rest are used by heavy duties and by jets and by trains or whatever. Uh, and all of these sectors also have a major change. Just look what's happened in the logistics, for example. A, a major, major changes, whether it's going to be the autonomous, maybe it's going to be the drones or just the 3D printing. And again, it's gone far beyond. If you see the more regulation around trucks and more new technologies, whether it's CNG and others, and all in all, we, our estimation talks about re reduction of about to about half by 2030 uh, and even more uh, by 2040. And this is, uh, for example, a, a chart um, from uh, Amory Levine from um, um, Rocky Mountain Institute who basically predict almost obsolete, that the oil will become almost obsolete by 2050. I think maybe it's a bit over-optimistic, but even if we'll be able to reach, you know, a certain point where oil will be like, I don't know, maybe one quarter, that's also a very, very uh, good achievements. Uh, so, so that's, uh, in general, what I have to say for today. Um, before I go, I just want to say a couple of uh, personal words. Um, for many of you who probably know that, this is my last summit. I'm going to leave this initiative after this summit. Um, and I want to say thank you. I'm living with immense satisfaction. This summit is part of it, but also uh, I had the pleasure of meeting great people. Uh, and I want to thank each and every one of you. Thank you very much.